Pro football was born here in 1920, and it is here where the game's history is preserved and updated. Hall of Fame weekend in Canton is a sports ritual with unique charm and great emotion, where another class of football immortals is celebrated, and where the sun comes up on a brand new NFL season. Tonight, from Canton, Ohio, it's the Philadelphia Eagles versus the Oakland Raiders on NBC's Sunday Night Football. And now let's welcome the Pro Football Hall of Fame class of 2006. Quarterback, Troy Aikman, the number one overall pick of the 1989 NFL Draft by Dallas. Aikman and the Cowboys won three Super Bowl titles, and he was the MVP of Super Bowl XXVII. Linebacker Harry Carson, a fourth round draft choice of the New York Giants in 1976. Carson played 13 seasons in New York and was a nine time Pro Bowl selection. Quarterback Warren Moon. He began his pro career in the Canadian Football League before entering the NFL with the Houston Oilers in 1984. Boone went on to play 17 seasons in the NFL and passed for nearly 50,000 yards. Representing the late Reggie White, his wife Sarah. Playing most of his career with Philadelphia and Green Bay, White was named to 13 consecutive Pro Bowls and his 198 sacks are second all time. Offensive tackle Rayfield Wright. He played for 13 years, all with the Dallas Cowboys. Nicknamed Big Cat, Wright was named to the NFL's all-decade team of the 1970s. And head coach John Madden. In 10 seasons at the helm of the Oakland Raiders, he achieved a 759 winning percentage, the highest in NFL history for anyone who coached at least 100 games. His 1976 Raiders were 13-1 and one and went on to win the franchise's first Super Bowl title. And there you have it, the Hall of Fame class of 2006. The debut of NBC's Sunday Night Football. NBC back in the NFL business for the first time since the 1998 season. And I'm thrilled and delighted to be partnered again with John Madden. You saw him a moment ago. He'll make his way up to the booth and he'll be here in a couple of minutes. And his old team, the Oakland Raiders, will be in action tonight. Since getting to the Super Bowl after the 2002 season, this team has won only 13 games over the past three years. So what did they do? Al Davis, the owner, went out, and it's going to be a reunion tour this year. Arshell is back as the head coach. He was fired after the 94 season. Davis said he made a mistake, so Shell is back, and the new quarterback will be Aaron Brooks, late of New Orleans. As far as the Eagles are concerned, they went to four consecutive NFC Championship games, and then the wheels came off last season. Take your choice. On the field, off the field, tons of injuries, the craziness surrounding Terrell Owens. Donovan McNabb hurt on opening night, really never got well, and then was done for the season in November, and the defense didn't play very well. But Owens is gone, McNabb is healthy, they made some acquisitions, and they are very optimistic. But who isn't optimistic? It's August the 6th, and everybody is undefeated. And here we go. Football is back. Randy Moss and the Oakland Raiders, Donovan McNabb, and the Philadelphia Eagles in the debut of NBC's Sunday Night Football. There's more. A look down at the Hall of Fame adjacent to Fawcett Stadium where the Raiders get set to face the Eagles. John and I will be manning the booth this year and down on the field, a very familiar face to all football fans because she has done such yeoman and stellar work over the past couple of decades. We welcome Andrea Kramer. Good evening, Andrea. Good evening, Al. Thank you very much. Well, one year ago today, Al Shell was in Canton, but he never could have imagined being in this position. He was going through the festivities at the Hall of Fame and enjoying life as the NFL Senior Vice President for Football Operations. Shell said that Al Davis admitted he'd made a mistake firing him back in 1994. Now, coming back after a 12-year absence, Shell said he had to change the culture in the locker room. No more cell phones going off. No more showing up late to meetings. 
the two biggest leaders on the Raiders, Warren Sapp and Randy Moss, have bought into Shell's determination to instill discipline and accountability. But really, Shell was hired to restore the winning ways of the Raiders that were the norm back when a hotshot young coach named Madden patrolled the sidelines. And speaking of Coach Madden, Al, how's it feel to share the booth with the Hall of Famer now? Well, John has made his way up the stairs, <laughs> and believe me, that's no easy task. So what did you do this weekend? I thought it was the greatest weekend of my life, Al. I left California in my bus on Monday. I got here Wednesday, and it's just been go, 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 and, and happen. I mean, you know, there's so many things. I mean, there's dinners, and there's parades, and there's inductions, and luncheons with the Hall of Famers, and it's just the greatest weekend and the greatest time of my life. Yeah, and a lot of people loved it yesterday. You made a tremendous speech yesterday and, of course, a, a nice, a great party last night with a lot of your old players coming back. That was terrific. That was something special because, like I was telling them, you know, last night that, you know, it's because of them. I mean, that's why if you're a coach, you go in with your players. It's the players that get you in the Hall of Fame. And I was just glad that so many of them were here and were able to be recognized and be a part of it. And now it's time to go to work. Good. Here we go. go. Eagles kicking off. It'll be David Akers to kick off and Chris Carr back to run it back for the Raiders and he'll take it at the five yard line. So the preseason is underway and the tackle is made up at the 18 yard line by Jason Short. So we're going to see the first units for each team about a quarter or so tonight and that means Aaron Brooks who came over from the Saints. Some pretty good seasons there, and then a bad one last year, and he comes west. Lamont Jordan, the ex-Jet, is in the backfield. Crockett is the blocking back, and of course, Randy Moss on the outside with Doug Gabriel. Courtney Anderson is the tight end up front, and this is a, a key unit for this team. Gallery moves to left tackle. Sims, Grove, McQuiston is a rookie at a Weeper State, and Walker is the right tackle. They really have to shore up that offensive front. From the 18-yard line, Brooks, who takes over for Kerry Collins, gives the ball to Jordan, and Lamont goes nowhere. Now let's take a look at the Eagle defense. So stellar under Jim Johnson all of those years when they were getting to the playoffs. Then last year, they began to fall apart. Curse, Patterson, Walker, and Darren Howard comes over from the Saints to shore it up. Jones, Trotter in the middle, and Matt McCoy are the linebackers. The secondary, normally pretty good, but last year very leaky. Brown, Dawkins, Lewis, and Shepard. Second and 10 from the 18-yard line. And on the second play of the game, we have a penalty. And this was another thing that killed the Raiders last year and Shell has been Ball working star, on. Number 76, offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. And that's Gallery switching from right tackle to left tackle. Right. Remember one of the, the first things that Art Shell talked about is putting toughness in this team. And it was really ironic. The first play of the game, they brought Randy Moss across in motion and made him a blocker on the end of the line of scrimmage. And then the penalty on Gallery at second down and 15. They run a draw to Jordan. Jordan, who backed up Curtis Martin in New York, didn't get a chance to play very much, and then came west. Is hit first by Javon Curse. It'll be third and long. Yeah, one thing you're going to see Javon Curse, he's right here, and he's going to take a, a hard inside move right there. See, the tight end starts down. He starts to follow him down to hold him off of you know, his get off, and then he just keeps coming right down the line of scrimmage. Curse broke in with a major bang as a Tennessee Titan. Then over to Philadelphia. Along the front here, third down and 16. After two runs and a penalty. Back three receivers to the left. And we'll give it to Jordan again. It's three and out with a penalty for the Oakland Raiders. Darren Howard. We talked about Howard coming over from New Orleans. Tackles his former mate. Yeah, and, and he's the type of guy, Darren Howard, he can play and or tackle. And this play here, he's playing tackle. You see, he started out as right end, and then they move him in at tackle. And that's and that, that's a great thing about getting to Darren Howard. You can have him, you know, against the run on base downs. You can have him outside as a defensive end, then moving in as a pass rushing tackle. Shane Luckler, who may be the best punter in the league, skies one to the 33-yard line. We know Mahe to run it back. 
gets taken down up at the 39 yard line and that's where Philadelphia will take over and we're going to see Donovan McNabb at least for part of the first quarter McNabb injured on openness Harriman's Jamal Jackson Sean Andrews and John Runyon up front Jackson trying to win the starting spot from Hank Fraley now from the 39 yard line they give the ball on first down to Brian Westbrook and Westbrook who missed the last part of last season with a sprained foot is taken down at the 48 yard line after a gain of 15 yards. That was pretty good by Westbrook. He looked like he was down and then he bounced back up and got another, you know, seven or eight yards. Watch him here and see if he is down. This is just a weak side lead man. No, he was down, but no one touched him. So he can just get up and keep going. He does. The Raiders could challenge that. But won't. The ball at the 46 yard line after the first offensive play, and they run a draw. And this is Westbrook again. And Westbrook picks up six yards to the 39 yard line. Let's take a look at the Oakland defense where you've got Burgess, who led the league in sacks last year, a former Eagle. Kelly and Sapp inside, and Tyler Brayton at the other end spot. The linebackers will be Sam Williams. Kirk Morrison moves to the middle after a good 2005 campaign. And the rookie outside, Howard. Washington, Schweigert, Huff, and Asamoah in the secondary. Huff was their number one draft choice for national champion Texas. And the first pass of the game is caught by Hank Bassett talking about basket as the training camp sensation. Undrafted, grew up in New Mexico, played for New Mexico State, drafted by, not drafted, but signed as a free agent by Minnesota and then traded to Philadelphia. That doesn't happen too often where you get a free agent traded, but you see what he does here. He makes a little move to the outside and then gets the inside shoulder and then Donovan McNabb can hit him right there in that slam. From the 32-yard line, they'll try Westbrook again, but nothing happening this time. Good tackle made by the outside linebacker Sam Williams. McNabb in the opener last year in Atlanta suffered a bruised sternum said he felt okay the next week but you could tell he was paying the price all season long and then finally in a Monday night game against Dallas John as we recall he threw an interception tried to make the tackle down he went and that was the end of the season for him and I'm talking to Andy Reid the other day, day about Donald McNabb he said the big thing the big test that he has to prove is that he can scramble or roll to his left this time he stays in the pocket and flings it to the outside, and it is caught for a seven-yard gain by Reggie Brown. In the absence of Terrell Owens, now with the Dallas Cowboys, Brown figures to ascend to the number one spot among wideouts. You know, Donovan McNabb looks pretty comfortable here in the pocket, doesn't he? I mean, the thing is, he gets back. He's very comfortable. He gets rid of the ball quickly. I mean, that's the thing. You know, that, that a quarterback has to read the defense, know where his receiver is, and then when he sees where he's going to throw, get it quickly out of his hand. Third and three out of the shotgun with three receivers. The third being Jabbar Gaffney, who they picked up from Houston in the offseason. And that pass is caught on the outside by Brian Westbrook. Westbrook, of course, is their key runner and also comes out of the backfield a lot and catches a lot of balls. Dual threat, first down. Thomas Howard made the tackle. It's a 14-yard game. I remember last year doing games, and they, you know, you'd be talking to the other team about what they were going to do on defense, and instead of you know, doubling a wide receiver or doubling a tight end, they were going to double the running back, Westbrook. And, you know, after T.O. was out of there, then Westbrook became the go-to guy or the guy that was going to be the big play guy. You see 5 8 2 oh, 3 and that's the question. How durable can he carry 22, 23 times a game? Well, no problem here. An opening night of preseason as he carries again and takes it inside the five-yard line before Schweigert makes the tackle. Tell you, and that's that's been the problem with the Raiders, you know, is 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 not getting a big pass rush, but not being able to stop the run. And then the division they're in. You know, if you're going to win divisional games, you have to be able to play the run. Westbrook's impressive, isn't he? Very. You know, because, you know, sometimes these guys that are short, you know, you always assume that they're going to just run outside and catch a pass, but there's there's a lot of running room inside for these smaller backs. Look at Warwick done. Second down and two. They give it to him again. He cuts it back, and Brian Westbrook will take it into the end zone. The Eagles are signaling touchdown. 
but the officials have not and they're going to spot the ball just shy of the goal line. Yeah and that's the play I was just talking about. I think you always think that a Westbrook is going to stretch it is going to stretch it so the defense kind of stretches and then look at the cutback. You see he goes like he's going to go outside stops plants that right foot and comes right back in. See his elbow goes down just before he gets to the goal line. But it's enough for a first down so it's first and goal on a drive that began at their own 39 yard line. Jumbo formation and they give it to Westbrook and he did most of the work so they let him take it into the end zone for a touchdown and so the Philadelphia Eagles I know it's preseason but it's hard to be more impressive than that Westbrook 32 yards on six carries and McNabb a perfect three for three for 29 and it's six nothing Philly you know on that right side when you have these guys there's Runyon here's Smith right here they make they make a good crease in there for Westbrook to get inside and the right guard Sean Andrews you know I'm talking to Andy Reid and the and the Eagle coaches they are really impressed with this guy he's lost 40 pounds and still weighs 350. Now Dave Akers who had a torn groin last year and some tremendous early season heroics before he was finally shelved kicks the extra point and the Eagles take the lead in Canton seven to nothing over the Raiders. NBC's Sunday Night Football is being brought to you by Chevrolet, America's brand, Chevy and American Revolution, by Quiznos, Eat Up, and by Rocky Mountain Refreshing Coors Light, Taste the Cold. And the aerial coverage tonight here in Northeastern Ohio brought to you by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Slim coming down, not very far from its base in Akron. Right up on 77 as David Akers gets ready to kick off on pretty sultry Sunday night. Temperature today up in the high 80s. Doug Gabriel and Chris Carr are back to receive. Small chance of rain a little bit later. It's very muggy. A yard into the end zone. It's Doug Gabriel. One of the wideouts. And Gabriel brings it back out to the 23-yard line. Sean Considine makes the stop. Raiders have it again. Down seven to nothing in the Hall of Fame game. East. Jimmy Johnson winning the Brickyard 400 today at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Now the Raiders were three and out and a penalty on their first series. Start from the 23 yard line. The ex St. Brooks. It's protected in the pocket and goes deep, but too high. Intended for Doug Gabriel. Coverage on the play that time. It was very good, and it's second down and 10. For the Oakland Raiders, 4-12 and 12 last year. 13-35 and 35 since losing the Super Bowl three years ago. Tied for the worst record with the 49ers over that span. 9.2 penalties a game, the highest in seven seasons last year. And the Raiders last year just couldn't force turnovers. They intercepted only five passes in 16 games. Second down and 10. Jordan is going to cut it back. That's going to move there up to the 28-yard line. McCoy and Curse in on the stop. You know, it's interesting how Jim Johnson, the defensive coordinator of the Eagles, played this on, on first down. He blitzed because he expected a pass. Then on second down, and it's usually after an incomplete pass, is now a running down. So he played run tough on second down. And now on third down, knowing Jim Johnson, he's going to play, you know, nickel defense. Uh, Raiders have three wide receivers. He'll play nickel. And this is when he really likes to blitz. But I don't think in a preseason game we're going to get a lot of them early. Well, they're showing blitz, and we'll see if they come. It's third down and four. Backing off now. Conventional rush, but a good one nonetheless. And all it takes are the two bookends to come in and make the stop. That's Trent Cole, number 58, coming in off the right defensive side. Who gets there first? Yeah, and Trent Cole beat Robert Gallery. You know, we were talking about the the move of Gallery going from a right tackle to left tackle. And when you get over at left tackle, you're going to get more speed. These type of speed rushers. So you have to get up quicker and you can't overextend. You can't get your nose over your toes like Robert Gallery just did. Leckler the punt for the second time. He won Mahe to bring it back. Low kick. Fielded at the 30. 
Mahi back to the 35. So the Raiders right now have run six plays for minus three after Philly marches down the field. Eagles have it back. 7 0 Philadelphia, first quarter in camp. He was a perfect three for three. Westbrook carried the ball six times. He got him into the end zone, and that'll do it. And a familiar face, Jeff Garcia, in his first season now with Philadelphia at the 35 yard line. And the handoff to Reno Mahi for a gain of three. Garcia started in Canada, just like Warren Moon, then came to San Francisco, played occasionally brilliantly there. In fact, he, he broke some records held by Montana and Young, and that's saying something. And then it was on to Cleveland for a year, not very good, then to Detroit for a year, not very good, and now here to back up McNair. I think he's the perfect backup here in Philadelphia because, you know, he knows this offense, he knows football, and I know Andy Reid hopes that he got the 49er Jeff Garcia this year. And with that second unit offensive line in there, well, this sort of looks like the old 49er Garcia in a way. Back to pass, everybody covered. Scrambles to his left, and Thomas Howard takes him down, but there's a flag down as well. You know, that had to be a heck of a start for Holy Donovan McNabb. Number though. 74, offense. 10-yard penalty. Still, second down. You know, your, your cuff said... That was a perfect start. When you have five preseason games, that was a perfect start for the first preseason game for Donovan McNabb. Had his surgery for the sports hernia on November 28th. Now Garcia, after the penalty on Winston Justice, the rookie offensive tackle from SC, a screen to Lino Mahe, and Mahe takes the ball up to the 35-yard line where Tyler Brayton makes the tackle, and that will set up a third down and nine. You know, and that's why screen passes don't work as well today as they used to. At one time, the, the defensive linemen all hustle more than they ever did. And it used to be that once you got by, you know, you would invite those guys to rush, and then and then they would keep going on by, and they wouldn't run. They wouldn't chase it. You see how Brayton is coming here, 91? He comes. After he stops his pass rush, he turns and runs 10 yards to make that tackle. Three wide out, shotgun here, third down and nine. Raiders rush for Garcia finds the open spot, but then the pass is incomplete. Short intended for Jason Levant. Rookie out of Michigan, Fabian Washington covering on the play, and Andy Reid will send his punting unit in. Yeah, and the one thing that they're going to do, any time you get a young tackle in there, they're going to give him help early. And that's a chip, and that's a pretty good chip. You know, you just want the guy, if you're a tackle, don't knock me off, just get his outside shoulder. That's what Mahe did. Dirk Johnson to kick. Chris Carr pulls in the short punt at the 24. And when we come back to Canton, Ohio, the induction of Reggie White into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. The unveiling of the bust in the ceremony here yesterday. At the 25-yard line now, we give it to Lamont Jordan, who finds some room around the left side. And that's a gain of eight. J.R. Reed makes the tackle. And of course, when we think back to Reggie White, John, we think about some patented moves of his. I'll tell you, he had great moves. That guy that he just lifted last there was Larry Allen, the Dallas Cowboys, one of the best offensive linemen in football. Look like Allen weighed about 140 pounds. Reggie was special. He was really special. He was big and he was strong and he was fast. And, you know, and he came up with big pass rushes and big plays when you needed him. You know, a lot of guys in, in football and life have stats, they have numbers, they have this and that, but they don't always get the plays when you need them. Reggie got the plays when his team needed them. McCoy knocking down Jordan just shy of the first down. Not only came up with the big plays, but helped to resurrect that Packer franchise when he signed as a free agent with Green Bay. I mean, that was, they had Favre and Holmgren was there, but that was, uh, that was a monster move. Third down and one. Short carries three times in a row, picks up a first down, and the Raiders have their first first down of the game, and we go to Andrea. Thank you very much, Al. Sarah Waite is the first woman this weekend this honor have meant to Reggie. Oh, man, just being in, in the class with 200 and something people, uh, with the older people, he would have had a ball. I don't think I would have seen him this weekend, and that's okay, because he would he was in awe of the past... Um, past Hall of Famers. And to be in a class with John Madden and Warren Moon, he, he would have had a great time. And, and I know 
I know he didn't think that he would get it the first round, but he would have been, he would have just exactly. been in awe. Stand by, Sarah. We'll head back to you in a moment. Al? All right, thank you, Andrea. Roderick Hood has just intercepted the long pass down the right sideline thrown by Brooks. Great coverage, and Hood is right there to pick it off. It's perfect coverage. He started out there in a bump and run where, where he made him go to the outside where he wanted him and then just got underneath him and just followed him right down the field and got his shoulder in there where he helped turn and locate his body to get in position to pick it off. Pass intended for Alvis Wittig. So Jeff Garcia and the Eagles have it again. Garcia's second series and a nice move here to the outside. Mahi for a gain of 17 off a Winston Justice block and we'll go back down to Andrea. What guidance his old coaches, you know, just, I was just, it's a reflection of our conversations when he was alive that brought the, the speech into fruition, which I really didn't have a speech, but the, the, the recognition of the people and, and just the things he wanted to convey to the audience, I think it, I think it came out. Well, I want to say... Friday night and then yesterday and tonight, and John has seen her firsthand. She is an amazing woman, raising now a 20-year-old son and an 18-year-old daughter. So she was so daughter. strong, Al, excuse me. She was so strong throughout the whole thing. Amazing. That's intercepted by Fabian Washington, who can fly. And Washington skirts the sideline and finally goes out of bounds at about the 23-yard line. So Roderick Hood picks one off for Philadelphia, and then Washington returns the favor against Garcia here. The Raiders have to be so happy to see this. Their corners didn't have an interception last year. And only five picks for the team all season. Over the next couple of days in Chicago with the owners, it's possible that they will come up with a new commissioner in the next 48 hours. Paul will leave here shortly and head to that meeting in Chicago. The Paul is retiring after some stellar work over a decade and a half. And now Jordan with a short field takes it to the nine-yard line off a John Paul Foshi block. And it will be first down and goal and what figures to be the probable final play of the first quarter unless they want to hurry up and get one off here in the next 15 seconds after a 14-yard gain. Yeah, you know, and that's what Art Shell was looking for. I mean, he, you know, we know all about, you know, getting the pass, you know, the deep ball and all those things, but you have to have your offensive line and they have to be solid first and you have to be able to run the ball. Then if you can do that, you can do those other things to that guy right there. That is the end of the first quarter here in Canton, Ohio. Philadelphia, seven. Oakland, nothing. By the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Canton, Ohio, Al Michaels, John Madden, Andrea Kramer. A little bit later, Bob Costas and Chris Collinsworth will be joining in as we start the second quarter. Oakland trying to capitalize on an interception. From the nine-yard line, first and goal, and Lamont Jordan has done all of the ball carrying tonight. Jordan has now carried the ball nine times for 26 yards. Sam Rayburn makes the tackle. You're going to see Sam Rayburn near the... When, when, when he starts to the inside there, then the guard has to be able to get him. And that's where you, you darn near have to cut him. See, and no one gets him, and he just he just runs right over Jake Grove. I mean, he just takes the center. Jake Grove, who was a good center, and Rayburn, who they call truck driver, he just takes Grove right into the backfield. Second down and goal now from the 12-yard line. Brooks looking for his first completion and gets it and gets a touchdown along with it. He goes to the tight end, Courtney Anderson. And he got hit on the hand as he threw it. Roderick Hood with the coverage on the play, but the interception by Washington sets up the short field and Oakland in a position to tie the game. Yeah, I think that's the type of thing that Art Shell was looking for. You know, be able to run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, and then, and then come back with the pass. You know, once you get them play and run, once you get them solidify it in there, uh, then throw the ball. Just don't come out and throw every down. And the tight end this year, I think, is going to be a big part of the passing game of the Raiders. Sebastian Janikowski for the point after. So Brooks with his first completion, good for 12 yards. The touchdown follows the interception that Garcia threw to Washington. Early second quarter, Oakland 7, Philly 7. John Madden 
You know, that felt so good, it didn't even hurt. <laughs> it actually it feels like that tonight. Yeah, I know, but they do that to you live. <laughs> J.R. Reed takes the ball up to the 26 yard line. I am not an art critic, but I got to say, I, li I like your bust. I think they did a, a great job. Agreed? No, yeah, a, a great. <laughs> I mean, it was really good. I mean, they, you know, they put a lot of time in it, you know, in measuring and, you know, and doing the whole thing. And and the fact that it's going to be there forever, too. You know, you just, you just hope that they get it as close to right as possible. And I am very, very impressed and happy with that. Well, it's a, I guess it's a combination. I mean, it, does he look to do you at a certain age? Yeah, that was the thing. I mean, he tried to get me a, kind of a half between what I am now and what I was when I was coaching. Compilation is uh, Reno Mahi can't make the catch. The pressure put on that time by on Garcia. So here's how the process starts. The measurements are taken. This is where in California or in Utah, John? This the first one was in California and the second one was in Utah. I always wondered what they use calipers for. And see, and then they use the calipers to measure me. Then he had all those pictures of me you saw there, you know, in different stages of my life. So he was kind of doing the combination of the whole thing. Great work. Second down and 10 from the 26-yard line. Mahe. I, I've known a couple of guys who weren't thrilled with the way their bus turned out. And you know what? You just have to live with it, I guess, and well, get used to it. I think there was one that didn't live with it. I think there's a story that Walter Payton didn't like his, and I think maybe had it done over again. Mm -hmm. Well, you're going for a makeover. Why not? Yeah. I mean, at a certain age. But the thing is, you know, seeing all those busts in there and, and yeah, I mean, it just... It just brings you back. You know, it's not just the bust or the, or the Hall of Fame, but it's what it meant and, you know, who those people were and what they did for the history of this game. Third down and nine now is Garcia. Swings it to the outside. Mahe picks up the first down. Some nifty moves and some bad tackling, and then the ball comes loose. Garcia's pass to Mahe complete. And there's no signal yet at the... 45 yard line and now it is recovered by the Philadelphia Eagles. Amahi who figures to be the number three back. Ryan Moats will back up Westbrook but he's hurt and back in training camp right now. And Mahe is one of those guys that can come out of the backfield or he can line up as a slot or a wide receiver and that's some pretty good running and some real lousy tackling. And if the Raiders are going to be better they have to improve in that area. I mean they were lousy tacklers last year and this is a lousy tackling situation right there. Mark Schell talking about it. Back to the basics. Blocking and tackling. That's the game. Bruce Perry will carry to the outside, and that's a good tackle right there. Good penetration made by number 96 for the Raiders. That's Irons, Grant Irons, coming from the outside to make the stop behind the line of scrimmage, and that's a loss of seven. And he is a real man, Grant Irons is. I had his dad. His dad played for me, Gerald Irons. In fact, he's here tonight, and... And Gerald Irons had a body just like Grant. Gerald Irons still has that same body. They work out together. And and you just see him like I saw him in the, you know, in training camp in the cafeteria. And he, and he walks over and he just, he's one of those guys that just has muscles on muscles. At 6'6 six, six and 285, fifth year out of Notre Dame. He's going to be a linebacker and a pass. There you go. Screen in that time. That is sniffed out perfectly as Bruce Perry makes the catch. And Derek Gibson. The number one draft choice of the Raiders back in 2001 is now fighting to retain a starting job, makes the tackle, and it will be third down and 15. The defensive coordinator, the son of Buddy Ryan, on Art Shell's staff, Art retaining Ryan and then moving in. Tom Walsh is his new offensive coordinator. So he kept some guys like Fred Boletnikoff is, is still here. Willie Brown is still here. Brought in some others. Ryan is still here. And, of course, he came from the New England Patriots and had that Bill Belichick defense. And on third and 15, the pressure that time is on Garcia. Has to get it away in a hurry. Flag here. Pete Morelli will make the call. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 94, defense. 15-yard penalty automatic. First down. So instead of a punting situation, that is Kevin Huntley, first-year player out of Kansas State. Not doing himself any favors in terms of making the team. 
You can see he's the end right there. You see he gets a pretty good push right there and then after the ball is out he hits a quarterback. They're really going to they're really going to be tough on that rule this year. Scott Young is and if anyone has never been here and has a chance to come to camp and go through the Hall of Fame and be there be there for this weekend you have to do it. Swing to the outside for Lino Mahe and if you're driving down I-77 it's right off the freeway you can't miss it. You're going to see Darnell Bing there. He was a, a safety in college, and here he's playing linebacker, so he's making an adjustment from going from back as a defensive back, coming up and playing linebacker. Now, he should be able to make that play because that's more like a, a defensive back would have to play where you have to you know, be downfield and come up and make a play. He got out there, and he read it, and he just whiffed. Second and two. Mahi takes it on the draw. And it will be third down and one. Upcoming, Bing in on the play again. Yeah, this is what Art Shaw was talking about. You know, where we have to improve on defense is right here in the box. I mean, where, where they don't get big plays inside, where they run that lead man, and you just get all those black jerseys right on or at the line of scrimmage and just stuff it. Because you can't have lanes in there because once they get that lane they can either just plow through it or cut back into it. So all the way along the line inside that box you can't give them any running lanes. Now third and one. Garcia with a short drop and then the pass is knocked down. As the rate of defense stiffens and Ataj Hawthorne. Ataj Hawthorne makes the the knockdown at the line of scrimmage and it will be fourth down and one. Was that Garcia in a short drop or Garcia dropping the short? <laughs> you know, and that's the problem. You know, that three-step drop with Jeff Garcia, if he doesn't right. get away from that line of scrimmage, that ball's going to get knocked down. He has to find a lane. And you see, he didn't get the lane there and he let that defensive lineman, well, he didn't let him, but the defensive lineman got his hand up in that lane. They're going to line up, at least line up, to attempt a... 55-yard Acres field goal. Dirk Johnson, the punter, will do the holding. Boy, Detmer has been his holder, but doesn't figure to make the active squad this year. So with a new holder, it is David Acres with a lot of leg, and I'll say he's got a lot of leg. 55 yards for David Acres. He's fully recovered from last year's injury. Troy Aikman went into the Hall of Fame and he's going to go into the Hall of Fame very shortly after his playing career ended. That was manifest yesterday and Troy is in the booth. We'll visit with him in just a second after the kickoff as David Akers will put it in the air. Chris Carr and Doug Gabriel are back to receive. Akers who comes off a 55 yard field goal. So he is in midseason form to say the least. Doug Gabriel from the nine. Back up to the 28 yard line. Troy, the whole weekend, the festivities, the induction yesterday. What will you most take away from the last 72 hours? Well, you know, that's a it's a great question, Al. And everyone has said, you know, about what a blur it is for the past three days. And it really has been. But I would say that other than the actual induction ceremony, the thing that I will remember the most is the Ray Nitschke luncheon. I just, you know, it's such an exclusive group. It's it's only for the Hall of Fame players and a few others. And so to even be in that room is very meaningful. Davis from the 28-yard line with Andrew Walter now in at quarterback. And he'll hand the ball off to Justin Fargus in his first action of the night. He'll pick up about six. I think a lot of people don't realize that Troy Aikman won more games in the 90s than any quarterback won in any decade. And you can see he has some illustrious company. Dan Marino with 85 wins over the course of a decade. And then in the 90s with the Cowboys winning those three Super Bowls, a total of 90 wins. Anything, as you, as you look back at your career, anything you wish you could have done that you didn't get accomplished you know there's really not and I think that that's why I feel like my career was so special is that I, I absolutely have no regrets and and it's the relationships it's, that you're always going to remember obviously the other thing that impressed me about you I mean a lot of things impressed me about you over the years I mean the way you carried yourself the way you played the game and you know you had all those numbers you were very unselfish about it and 
and in going into the Hall of Fame the way you honored your coaches? Well, you know, and, and you and I had talked about that. I, I really do feel blessed. I had an opportunity to play with great coaches. And when I say that, not just named people, not just guys like Terry Donahue or Jimmy Johnson. I played with coaches that coached me as a youth that no one would know who they are. Manny Gisalva, uh, Ish Kanadabi as a high school coach, and Bill Holt, and those type of guys. And they made a huge impact on my life. Now third down and five. Walter trying to win the backup job and maybe even a little bit more has it knocked down. Troy, again, congratulations. You're going back you. to work with Joe Buck pretty soon, right? We've got our first game Thursday night. Yes, this Thursday. So huh? uh, well, this right. Thursday. Looking forward yeah. to it. Congratulations. And, uh, great way to kick off the season. Terrific. Thanks, guys. All right. I'm Troy Aikman. Proud to be your class Thank you, buddy. years. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Love to watch him play. I mean, he's just, everything was so professional, so organized, never lost his careers, did it the right way. Right. He did everything the right way, and and if you ever ask, has there ever been a perfect quarterback? Troy Aikman, in many ways, is as close to perfect as you can be. And he's a guy who had a lot of pressure on him at the beginning. False start, number 40, offense. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. And 55 times. Now, mm -hmm. I said, how many plays did you have in that game? <laughs> is it 56? That was right after the Cowboys had been sold, and Jerry Jones took over, and Jimmy Johnson was the coach, and the kick is a short one. But Aikman came in with a lot of pressure on him, and as much as he was the number one overall draft choice out of UCLA, played with the Bruins after he'd started his career at Oklahoma, somebody loses a shoe, and we have another flag down. Pete Morelli is the referee tonight. That's the thing about preseason or anything. If you're trying to make a team and you lose a shoe, you better keep running. <laughs> Remember Steve Young in a preseason game once? He lost his hat. He lost his helmet. And he kept running. He got in the sideline and cut back. An eligible man downfield. Number 55, kicking team. Five-yard penalty will be added at the end of the run. First down. Danny Clark. Well, that is so Steve Young. Halfway through the period, Warren Sapp may be done for the night. First unit guys playing very little. Well, Sapp had that look. He was yeah. done yeah. guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. kept the pads on. That's Matt <laughs> Shovel making the catch. And that's the way it is, especially in a situation like this. Each of these teams will play not the normal four, but five preseason games, unless McNabb was in for only one series and he led him to a touchdown and he's still smiling about that drive I mean that's the thing you say well it's just a preseason game but to Donovan McNabb you know you've been working you don't know what's going to happen you would like to I mean, that's that's the, the drive that you dream of I don't know that Warren Sapp had any dream about any drives nope he didn't get that one I don't know that Randy Moss caught a pass either the guy no. next to him no. Didn't even throw to Moss. No, watching Randy Moss in practice, I believe me, he is something special. First attempt at the 42 yard line. And that's Reno Mahe for a gain of three. Let's go to Andrea Kramer. Well, Al, Jeff Garcia told me it was very quarterbacks. Let's see if he goes three for three. He said he has not talked to Drew Bledsoe, but if he did, his advice would be keep your poise and stay focused, Al. Sure that we'll, we'll get to Drew Bledsoe. Loss here, second and seven. Terrell Owens, Survival Society, toss. Yeah, and I think, <laughs> it's, I think you always wonder. I mean, here's a guy. Terrell Owens is is as good a wide receiver probably as is in the league. And when when he's on and everything is going right, you know, he's a guy you want. But when things aren't going right. You know, he's made it tough. I mean, he made it tough for Jeff Garcia. He made it tough for Donovan. Oh, no. And now he gets another chance in Dallas. I think I'd still take him, though. Mm. Yeah. I think I would. I really would. Third down and 10. Garcia going deep, and that is out of bounds. It's right on the money to Greg Lewis, but he's on the chalk on the sideline, and it's incomplete. It will be fourth down and 10. Well, I guess, you know, you... With a guy like Owens, you just hope he's old enough, he's been around, he's worn out his welcome in San Francisco and Philadelphia, and you do, you take a chance. He's got so much talent, as they've done in Dallas. Hey, maybe he's, maybe we'll get everything we hope we'll get out of him. Well, you know, and it's his, his first year at San Francisco, I and mean, he was a good player, good right. teammate, got along with everyone. His first year with the Eagles was fun. After that. 
And George Johnson is able to deaden the punt. And the coverage is good at the four yard line. With 5.50 remaining in the opening half. Philly on top, 10 7 over the Raiders. Auto dealership back in 1920. And here we've come, 86 years through the years. And look what that meeting has wrought. You know, and this is a perfect place for it. This is a perfect place to, to have this game where you're kind of the heartlands and, and everyone comes back to where it all started. And you come in here and you can just feel it. Believe me, you can feel it. Andrew Walker is the quarterback, and that's Justin Farr. I guess Andrew Walker is a guy who... I, I guess sooner or later, John, he could ascend. Kerry Collins was let go. They brought in Aaron Brooks, but they drafted Walter out of Arizona State. And when I, when they passed on Matt Leinert and Jay Cutler in the draft, were they saying, we believe in Walter? Well, they were partly saying that. I mean, partly they wanted to, you know, draft someone else, but they liked Walter, and, they, and they're rooting for him. I mean, I don't know that they know enough about him to say, okay, he's our guy. He's going to be the guy this year. He's going to be the guy next year. But I think they're hoping that he is. And, and you have to get in and do it in the game. And you have to get it. These preseason games are very important for guys like Andrew Walton. He's six feet six. An imposing figure in the pocket. Swings it out to Fargus. And Fargus makes a nice inside move that nets him a first down. Tackled there by Dexter Wynn. Art Shell is talking about Justin Fargus and how he expects him to, to have a better year. He says, that, you know, he needs him. I mean, Lamont Jordan is going to be the starting runner back, running back, but he needs Fargus, he said, to be like he was a couple years ago. He said he watched film, and a couple years ago, you looked like you were pretty good. You looked like you were going to be something. Then last year, you just seemed to disappear, and you got to come back. You got to come back into our lives and into our team and, and help Lamont Jordan out. His fourth season. Played at USC. Vargas. But I guess his biggest claim to fame is father. Some of you will remember Starsky and Hutch. His father, Antonio, was known as Huggy Bear on that show. And that's his problem. I mean, he's known as the son of Huggy Bear <laughs> instead of a good running back in the NFL. And that's where he has to get. I mean, that's what the Raiders are hoping. And I'm sure that's what Justin Vargas is hoping. And Huggy Bear is probably hoping. And he's got a little battle here. You know, Jordan's going to be the number one guy, but they picked up Rod Smart, the former He Hate Me of XFL fame. And we'll see him before the night is done as he tries to win a spot. Second down and eight. Director backing up and sets up a very dangerous screen. And the tackle is made well behind the line of scrimmage. John Paul Fashi makes the catch, but then Mac McCoy is right there. Yeah, and that's the guy you're trying to take advantage of. You're trying Illegal to run use that. Of hands. Illegal use of hands. Hands to the face. Number 31. Defense. Five-yard penalty automatic. First down. Well, instead of a big loss, that's Dexter win. It's a little five-yard penalty, but it's big because any defensive foul is going to result in an automatic first down. Yeah, Dexter win is a corner, and sometimes you go to jam those wide receivers and your hand just goes up to the face. You'll start on the shoulders and then the hand just goes up to the face. That's exactly what happened here. See, he's trying to hit, hit him on both shoulders and then that right hand just goes up into the face and that was the penalty. You, you got to hit those shoulders and then, and then bring the hands back to hit him again. You'll go straight out and straight back. Up into the face of Johnny Morant. And again, that's the match up here. First and ten with 322 remaining in the opening half. All right, calm down. The Eagles march down the field on the opening drive with McNabb and Westbrook. Someone just told someone to calm down. Did you hear that? <laughs> it's all right, just calm down. It looks pretty calm right now. Yeah, there's a pass rush defense now of the Eagles, and that's the you know when the one where they bring Cole in as a as a pass rush guy off this edge and it's tough to be calm when you know that he's coming. You know you look down at that blimp shot you think there are enough markings on this field but they play high school football here they play some college football here and the the interior hash marks are for the NFL so you have the NFL then you have college then you have high school to the outside. Thank you. 
And then even more markings there, John, by the uh, where the numbers are. Right. These these things here, those lines inside the numbers, would be where the NFL pro numbers would be. There's so many defenses and pass patterns based on the numbers and the sideline and the middle that you have to have those markings. Well, they paint those in. For this game, Justin Fargus with the carry here over the right side. That Jasper, the ex Raider, makes the tackle. Ticking down under three minutes to go in the opening half. Yeah, this is the thing that the, the Eagles will do. You see how they just pack everything up. If, if, they, if they expect run, they are going to load the box and they're going to load the line of scrimmage. If they expect pass, they're going to use nickel, dime, or they're going to blitz you. Jim Johnson, one of the top defensive coordinators in the NFL, is. I've always felt that over the years, he's kind of been a step ahead of the offenses. Second down and nine. Great protection there, and Walker lost his grip on it as he came forward with the football, and it will be third down. You see what Walter did there? You know, we're talking about Troy Aikman and how poised he was, and he didn't do that. The, when, you, when you get back in the pocket, and Ken Stabler used to do this too, now, just stand there. Don't, don't be jumping around. Watch him here. You see he's standing, and he's waiting, and he's jumping around. You don't have to do that because that bounces your eyes up and everything and gets you, gets you all goofy. Just just get back there, set, and then and then let it go. But don't be jumping up and down. And the end result is the ball comes out of his hands. Third down and nine. The end result is usually ugliness. Good movement here, then a little toss, and that's going to be a first down as Fargus gets free. So they improvise, and a big gain as J.R. Reed finally takes down Fargus. A little, in effect, shovel for 29 yards. Yeah, and that was good by Andrew Walter there. The time before that, he was moving in the pocket. Now here, when you feel a rush, you have to move to the outside. Now that's good. Move to the outside, still look upfield, and find a receiver. The time before, he was just jumping up and down in the pocket. That time, he got away from the rush, moved to the outside, and found Fargus. Raiders get into Philadelphia territory at the two-minute warning. Philadelphia 10, Oakland 7 at the Hall of Fame game in Canton, Ohio. Season. They got him. They got the wave down, and yep. Chris just didn't know which way to look. I mean, the wave was good, and then he turned the head to the left. That was a bad head turn. Let's we'll take one. We'll come back for another one in a second. Here's Justin Fargus carrying the ball down to the 42-yard line inside the two-minute warning, and the Raiders will play the hurry-up offense here. I mean, it's great to be with those guys and, and have them with us and NBC. Oh, it's great. Bob, the best ever. There he is. That's Bob, Bob, Bob on the right, by the way. <laughs> Either one of them could figure out where the camera is. Chris Collinsworth. And, and as the season moves along on Football Night in America, they'll be joined by Jerome Bettis, the bus, Sterling Sharp. Peter King will have the inside information. Second down and five. Walker retreats and then throws, and that is incomplete. Knocked down on a pass to the right side. It's intended for Will Buchanan. Art Shell last coached the Raiders in 94. When you think about it, when they left L.A., that was the end of Art's tenure as the Raider coach. He had been there since 89. And now back he comes, as we said at the top, on the reunion tour. Right, and I thought Art Shell would have been back sooner. I was... You know, I always thought when he was a player that he was going to make a good NFL head coach. And he did make a good NFL head coach. And he went around and had some assistant jobs in, you know, in Kansas City and Atlanta and never got his opportunity again until now. He had about given up on third and five. Coming back to make the catch and getting the first down is Will Buchanan. So that will move the chains. Stop the clock with 1.11 to go in the opening half. He's talking about Tom Walsh, the new offensive coordinator. He's given him a little bunch where you have three wide receivers or three receivers all together. One goes inside, one goes outside short. That's the one he throws to, and one went outside deep. And there is Tom Walsh, and Walsh had been away from football about as long as Shell, but Tom got the call from Art right after Art knew he was going to wind up with the head job. 
Hart has a lot of confidence in Tom Walsh. Both the throws and it's incomplete. Tom Walsh had been living in Idaho. He'd been doing some broadcasting and a little bit of scouting, but he was running an inn in Idaho, and he was the mayor. He was the mayor of Swan Valley, Idaho. So now he takes this job. So the mayor now is his wife, Ann. I mean, this is like Chicago in the 30s. Right, and then he forgot in those years that he was gone, he forgot how to wear the headset. And he got it kind of down in the back, and the right ear's kind of falling <laughs> off, and his glasses are down, and he has to get his stuff straightened out a little here. That's right. You're gone for a decade. <laughs> you got to get the mechanics down. Right, you got to get your stuff fitting right. Second and 10 from the 35 yard line. Walter is pressured, and that's enough to knock him down. Thomas just did get a hand on him and knocked him down for the sack. That was a pretty good hand that he got on him, though, wasn't it? Jukwe Thomas, and the thing, you know, that, that, that you, you always keep going, and no matter what you can get or where you can get the quarterback, that will, will make a play for you. I mean, because it's going to make him do something. I mean, that thing, it made him start to try and scramble to get out, but it also took him down. But when you can swipe at him like that and then, and then make him put the ball down and move, that's how you get a lot of sacks. Now, you don't always get those clean ones where you come free off, the, off that edge and hit the quarterback. Sometimes you have to do those kinds of things. And if everyone keeps doing them, you're going to get a lot of sacks. Third down and 16 now after the Raider timeout. One minute left in the half. Philadelphia up 10 to 7. I'll tell you, his coach would have never let that happen. Art Shell was one of the best left tackles ever played. I mean, he was great. I mean, you could talk about a guy we're talking about. You know, Troy Aikman, how he was darn near perfect as a quarterback. Art Shell was darn near perfect as a left tackle. Third and 16. Getting open, but the pass is overthrown for Marcellus Rivers. Found the open spot in the secondary, but it's incomplete. Fourth down. So you had Shell and you had Upshaw. That wasn't too bad, huh? Well, and then I also had Otto and I also had Bob Brown and I also had Dave Casper. So, you know, on that line and the tight end, I mean, I had like, you know, four or five Hall of Famers. So yeah. there's, there's one of them right there, Jim Otto. You know, I always said if you if you wanted to know a definition of a pro football player and you didn't know what he was, you just came from another planet, you just show him a picture of Jim Otto and say that's it. Right at home here in Canton. Fair catch call for him, and they let it go. And that's enough to create a touchback. So a good juke job done there as the ball rolls into the end zone, and the Eagles will have it with 45 seconds remaining. John's Hall of Famers, and John's got a lot of company here. Jim Otto, of course, we just saw him. George Blanda, so many miracle comebacks. The great cornerback, Willie Brown. Gene Upshaw, now the head of the Players Association. Fred Miletnikoff here tonight. Wide receiver coach. Shell, the mad stork, goes to the post. And, of course, Al Davis, the owner, who went in to the Hall of Fame and was John's introducer yesterday at the ceremony. Yeah, and Al, uh, you know, I was very proud of the job that he did, and I was, I was proud to have Al as my presenter because he's the guy that made everything possible for me as a coach. Mahi gets tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Anybody that you can think of from that era who belongs in the Hall of Fame who's not in it right now? Yeah, I, I mean, I think of a lot of people. I think of, you know, you know, my quarterback, Ken Stabler. I mean, he was a Hall of Famer. Ray Guy, I think, is a is a Hall of Famer. Uh, uh, Jack Tatum uh, is a Hall of Famer. Uh, you know, I mean, there's there's a lot of these players. Tom Flores. Uh, you know, there's a lot of these people. Ron Wolf. You know, he was with us all those years, and he's a guy that got all those players. And I'm sure, you know, he'll be in the Hall of Fame someday. And and you know, I just you know, and that's that's how you won. That's how I got here by having players like that. And that is the end of the half. The Philadelphia Eagles leading the Oakland Raiders 10-7 in the Hall of Fame game. Coming up next, Bob Costas, Chris Collinsworth with the Toyota Halftime Show. But first, these messages from your local NBC station. The Hall welcomes six new members. We've already heard from Troy Aikman and Sarah White, the widow of the late Reggie White. And we'll have Warren Moon, Harry Carson, and Rayfield Wright in the second half. But perhaps no one from the class of 2006 has enjoyed himself more this weekend than our own John Madden. 
Before he explained football to America, before his instant success as a broadcaster, John Madden was a natural in another role, a born coach. Al Davis put him in charge of the Raiders at age 32. By 42, he'd left the sidelines for good. The character of the Raider teams he coached, as notable as their relentless success. But it would be 28 years until this weekend before coach John Madden would be immortalized in bronze. John, the long wait, 28 years. Had you begun to think it wasn't gonna happen? Uh, yeah, I mean, that thought came in and out of my mind and something that would be, you know, so big to get into mm -hmm. that you can't just say, oh, well, well, heck, forget it. And, you know, and maybe because I waited so long uh, and it finally came, I appreciate it more because it can't be any more appreciated than it is. You're reveling in it as you should. Yeah. On the other hand, it's amazing to me that it took this long. When you just look at the simple record, eight playoff berths in 10 years, highest winning percentage of any coach with more than 100 victories, youngest coach to reach that plateau. What was the delay about? You know what it was? I was a finalist. Like I said, like 26 years ago, 28 years ago, I was a finalist, so I was, I was that close. And they said the reason I didn't make it then is I was so young, I was still in my 40s, that they felt that I would go back to coaching, and then they didn't want you know, a, mm. an active coach in the Hall of Fame. All my players that are out there, there's between 30 and 40 ex-rated players, play, all stand up. Stand up, enjoy the moment. This is ours, they can't take it away from us. They can't ever take us away from us. And I love you, thank you very, very much. You didn't have too many rules, but you had a bunch of guys who'd bend any rules that were presented. Yeah. I mean, just a list of a rogues gallery of characters. Was there ever a time where you had to sit one of them down and say, you know what, I'm an easygoing guy, you pushed me too far? Any one time you made it was every day. <laughs> However many Every times. day with that group. Marv Hubbard, after a game, they used to go to a place, Clancy's. Then there was a cleaner's next door. It had a great big window. And Marv was so proud of the fact that he could, boom, he could hit that window and pop it and shatter the whole window and, and not cut his hand or, or go all the way through him. He Who just wouldn't had, be proud of that? No, he just had that technique, yeah. <laughs> he had that technique. Before he would go, he would leave, you know, whatever, I would say it cost $50. He'd leave $50 with the bartender, give this to the lady in the morning, because I'm going to break the window. Now, he thought that was okay. So I had to, you know, sit him down and talk, Marv, you can't, you know, pop windows at night. You know, it's against the law. And he'd say, yeah, but I paid for it. You have to stay with me a moment on this one. This is a little goofy here, and you're going to say, oh, there's old Madden being, being goofy again, but I believe that the busts talk to each other. I thought of that after I got, you know, voted in, and then the more, you know, I thought it was just a crazy idea. And then the more I thought about it, the more I think it's true. I think they really do, because, you know, immortality, you know, you don't have immortality, but your bus does. And it just can't sit there like a lump. You know, it has to do something. <laughs> and it has to. <laughs> and all the other guys are in there. And they turn out the lights, and you just can't be a lump. You know, and maybe they even play. You know, I mean, maybe that'll be the but, next but, thing where I John, have John, they play. have no arms or legs. <laughs> they have no, no torso. Yeah, but they got spirit. I mean, I really think you take that group <laughs> in there, they'll figure out, you know, you know how to play, how to, how to do it. A lot of fans, especially younger fans, know you more for the broadcasting, the commercials, the video game, than for your coaching career. I'm guessing it means a lot to you to have this additional certification as a football guy. If you were to ask me, I would say that, you know, I'm a coach, and I'm a coach that does other things. But uh, I never, ever, ever want to lose being a coach. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome, once again, John Adams. One of the great moments of this weekend, great moment for any new Hall of Famer, is when they get the jacket. You know, I mean, there's so many memories that I'm going to have of that, that of, of the whole weekend, but that's, that's one of the biggest. When I got that jacket and I put it on, and I had my two sons with me there. I mean, I just felt the moment and the moment with them and, you know, everything that they've gone through and we've all been through together. And, you know, I know you use that word, it can't be any better than that too much, and I probably do, but 
doggone, it can't get any better, man. It really can't. You know, Chris Madden's Raiders won the one Super Bowl in which they appeared January 77, Super Bowl 11. They pasted the Vikings. But when you think about the other teams in that era, Shula's Dolphins, Knowles Steelers for a while, Denver and the old Baltimore Colts had their moments. You change a play or two in three or four postseason games, he might have gotten to the Super Bowl three, four times like Noel did. Yeah, you know, but just on a personal note, when I was watching John Madden yesterday, I was thinking how much fun it was to have a friend yeah. go in the Hall yeah. of Fame. And then I started thinking, you big dummy, millions of Americans all over the country are thinking, I have a friend going in the Hall of Fame and they never met him once. You know, Parcells came back, Gibbs after a long wait, and Vermeil came back. Even Walsh came back to coach in college at Stanford. Madden left at age 42, and yet he told me today he never once really seriously considered going back. He was fulfilled, found a new life in broadcasting, never looked back. All right, we got to step aside, but for just a second, a black head coach, Al Davis naming him in 1989 after Mike Shanahan had started that season. Shanahan had coached the team in 88 and part of 89. This is Bruce Perry to run back the kickoff, and we start the second half with a flag. Holding during the return, number 50, receiving team, team. 10 yard penalty, first down. Pete Morelli flagging. Number 50, that's Greg Richmond. You know, it's funny, you watch these these special teams, the kickoff coverage, the, the punt coverage, and you think, well, this is, you know, just a preseason game, and it's a kickoff, and it's really not. But this is where backup players, this is where young players make the team. You know, if you're not going to be a starter, you better be able to cover kicks. You better be able to get down on kickoffs, and you better be able to get down on punts and make tackles. So Coy Detmer is now the quarterback. We saw McNabb for one series, Garcia for the rest of the half. And Detmer now in his 10th season out of Colorado. Been with the Eagles for a lot of years. And I guess they didn't retire Terrell Owens' his number because Jason Avant, the rookie, wears number 81 and makes the catch for a gain. That's good for a first half. Yeah, I have one more thought about Terrell Owens. You know, we were talking about Donovan McNabb and, and Jeff Garcia. And, and and not you know defending Terrell Owens, but you know both of those guys were better with Terrell Owens than they were without him. You know you can't take everything away from the guy. Right. Second down and five. This goes to the up back, and that is Thomas DePay, who comes up apparently a little bit short of the 30-yard line. It will be third down here. And to John's point. As you look at Donovan McNabb, two Owens. I mean, the key numbers there would be touchdowns and interceptions. Over the year and a half, they played together 18 touchdowns and only four picks on passes intended for Owens and a sparkling pass rating. Third and one. And a pretty sparkling record a couple of years ago. They went to the Super Bowl. Yep, and Owens got hurt and, of course, made that miraculous comeback. Perry makes... Enough yardage for a first down here. He's still looking for like a number one receiver right now. Todd Pinkston, good player, but coming off an Achilles tear and an operation. And he has Achilles soreness, so he's back at camp. Reggie Brown, another guy, of course, but it's the first preseason game, so a lot of guys aren't here. But you can take a look at the guys that they have. They picked up Gaffney from Houston. Greg Lewis, pretty good. McCants has had his moments. And then the three rookies, including... Basket. You know what, you know what it looks like to me, excuse me, Al, with that group, it looks like to me that they have a lot of good second and third receivers and no number one guy. Definitely. And that number one guy then becomes, you know, again, Brian Westbrook, uh, you know, coming out of the backfield and lining up outside and, and all those kind of things. Brian Riddle with the tackle behind the line of scrimmage right there. That's right, Xing out number 81. Yeah, he's going to show him, isn't he? Yeah, boy, I'm <laughs> telling you. Uh, I'm telling, I'll show you. Just X out. Tell him, we'll forget about him. Does Andy Reid look like Ben Franklin with those glasses? <laughs> you know? He's on a bill, I think. You, you bring up an interesting point. Maybe, you know, you, maybe you're in Philadelphia long enough, you begin to look like Ben Franklin. Bruce Perry. 
Andy's a good guy and a good coach. I was when we were waiting to come out on the field before the game. Uh, you know, he he knew I was out there and he invited me in. He was sitting in his office in there and you know, and I wanted to look at his play sheet and see what he had. You know, and he just wanted to talk about the Hall of Fame and the guys and what it meant and the feeling and you know, talking about his family and and my, you know, I mean, I mean that whole thing. I mean, Andy wasn't going to give me anything, but. You know, when you line up the the good guys on one side, you put you put Andy Reid on that side. Third down and seven from the 28-yard line. That was that set wildly pass as he gets hit as he throws. I'll tell you one thing about the Franklin thing. If in the next thunderstorm you see Andy Reid outside with a kite and a bottle, then we're really onto something. You know what he had in his locker room? No, I couldn't figure out. I had to call him on it. You know, like. Sometimes you just can't help yourself. You know, he had one of those mirrors, you know, one of those hand mirrors that, you know, you hold in your hand, you got the little mirror there. I said, Andy, what in the heck are you doing with that? You know, like he's going to look at himself and comb his hair before he comes out on the field, or before he puts that hat on. Did he have an answer? No, he picked it up and he said, he said yeah, he said, look, this is what I do, and he did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie Hodges with the punt. Earl Toller returns it to the 36. New Hall of Famer Warren Moon. He was enshrined yesterday. Back with him after. When it's your turn. 17 years in the NFL after five in Canada. In the class of 2006. Philadelphia leading by a score of 10-7. We'll get to Warren in the second with 11 and a half to go in the period. This is Rod Smart, the former he hate me of the XFL for a gain of a couple. And Warren is with Chris Collinsworth. Chris. All right, thanks, Al. Warren, first of all, congratulations. What a great on. bat that day, but put up big numbers because the receivers had great days after the catch. Yeah, you had a pretty good day yourself. <laughs> first African-American quarterback in the Hall of Fame. I know you don't like to talk about that. You just want to be known as a quarterback, but it is historic. It is. I hate the most of it. I've talked to so many guys that have told me how much pressure they were constantly under to change positions, and I know that happened to you too. It happened quite a bit, uh, all the way through from high school, up through college, all the way into the NFL. Teams were telling me to change positions because they thought I was a good enough athlete to play a wide receiver like you played or play a defensive back, but I knew I wasn't a good enough. Al? All right, thank you, Chris. Loved watching Warren Moon play, especially in the run and shoot years with Jack Pardee's offense in Houston. The punt here. That's the win. Running it back out to the 24-yard line. And Philadelphia will have it for the second time in the half at that spot. Ten and a half to go in the third. A three-point game. Philly up. The Eagles now with Detmer's quarterback. Happening on the ground right now is uh, Bruce Perry runs right into Bobby Hamilton, and we'll go to the field and Andrea Kramer. Andrea, thank you very much, Al. When Warren Moon hugged Donovan McNabb in the beginning of the game, he said to him, "Remember, everything I did is to make it easier for you." What did Warren Moon's induction mean to you? Well, it was special to me. Um, you know, a guy that I idolized and, and took parts of his game and added into mine, and you know, it was a special situation for me because. Uh, he was, I told him he was, he was my hero, my idol growing up. And, uh, you know, I just want to have my career like his. Uh, and, you know, someone that I, I, I would love to be uh, in his class. You assured me that you broke a sweat going three for three for 29 yards. I'm not quite sure, but how did it feel being out there, your first activity since your groin surgery? Well, well, well. Offensively, we were able to establish the run, uh, you know, hit with some passing. Uh, we were consistent in everything that we were doing, and we were executing. And, you know, it's always a rewarding feeling to get the ball in the end zone. And uh, offensively, we've been working extremely hard through the mini camps and training camp. And, and what a way to reward yourself to, then to get a touchdown. But this is just one step. Uh, we have a long way to go, uh, but it's exciting to see what we did today. Stand by one moment. We need to go back to Al. Al, what's going on? Speaking of quarterbacks, uh, McNabb's one of his backups, Mr. Detmer, just got sacked. Grant Irons came in for the sack, forced the fumble, recovered by the Raiders, and they are at the 13-yard line, first and 10. That's the thing that Grant Irons can do. You know, he's kind of a linebacker slash defensive lineman, and he looked like he was shot out of a cannon coming from that backside. Rod Smart, no gain. Back to Andrea. Donovan, statistically, 2004 was your best season when you had a certain receiver. I mean, it's about winning ball games, and uh, that's all that I care about. That's all that, you know, I play the game for is for the win, and, you know, we're going to get back to having a successful season again. 
what did you possibly learn from the whole Terrell Owens situation, or as Andy Reid characterized it, the chaos of last year? It's not about learning anything. You know what it is? is it's behind us. We've moved on. Uh, we're focusing on what we need to do this year. And I think the most important thing we have to do is get back to playing uh, family football uh, where we're trusting one another. We don't have to worry about what the next man is doing. We, we focus in on our jobs uh, and trust that the guy next to us is going to do his job. And I think uh, things have definitely changed this year. And, and guys have kind of understood what happened last year and they've moved on. Donovan, thanks very much for your time. Al, back to you. Okay, thank you, Andrew. It's third down and seven now for the Raiders at the 10-yard line. Walter feeling the pressure, and as he moves his arm forward, he is it knocked down by Jaquay Thomas, who gets in there again. Walter winds up with the football, but it will be fourth down, and in comes the field goal team. You know, as I watch Andrew Walter here, uh, now, at the end of the first half and in this third quarter, I think I think he's just a little late with the ball. I mean, you know, he has that indecision right there. You see where he gets that? I mean, the ball just went out the back door on that one, but he doesn't seem to get the ball out of there in good timing with his receivers. Janikowski now, 33-yard attempt to try to tie the game, and it's Leckler who drops the snap. So there is no attempt on what would have been a pretty easy field goal try. Adam True, one of the best snappers with a little low snap here. Leckler couldn't get it down, and the Raiders can't tie it. It's still 10-7, Philly. Dear Quiznos, we the understand in action. Portis and the Redskins coming to Cincinnati next Sunday night. On the 24-yard line now after the box field goal attempt. The catch is made for a gain of seven yards by the rookie Jason Avant of the University of Michigan. Yeah, we saw you know Grant Irons come and, and hit Coy Detmer and cause a fumble. And that was the thing that Rob Ryan was talking about when I was up at training camp is, is that they have to get turnovers. You know, it's not just playing defense and stopping guys and making tackles, but he says we have to get turnovers. You know, we have to cause fumbles. We have to get interceptions. We have to make things happen this year on defense. Second and three. Bruce Perry. I'll tell you one thing. You look at Rob Ryan, he is a Raider. Yeah. <laughs> he looks more like a Raider <laughs> than, than <laughs> Buddy Ryan's son, doesn't he? You know, you'd say, boy, he looks like Buddy Ryan's son. No, he doesn't look like Buddy Ryan's son. He looks like a Raider. Yep. I don't know what this guy's doing. How do you have all that stuff on and fall asleep? Yeah, I just, well, I mean, it just has to keep you awake with all that baloney you got around you. How do you get that stuff through security? Third and two from the 32. Dead man. And that pass is incomplete. Intended for Darnery and McCanch. It's three and out with six and a half to go in the period. The, there is the clan. You recognize those folks, John? Yeah, Look my at this. Sons. That's Aiden. And that's Sam, and that's Jesse, uh -huh. and Jack was right behind. There's Jack right there. Beautiful. That's Joe, Wendy, Mike, the whole. <laughs> they're all okay for this. They've all been part of the whole Hall of Fame thing, and they're, and they're here at the game tonight. I'll tell you, that's you know, that's what makes this thing special, you know, about going in the Hall of Fame is, you know, having your family and all those people with you. They're running on the same adrenaline you are, and they're on West Coast time. Jack standing up. Go, Jack! Our giant linebacker Howie Carson in the class of 2006. Marcus Tullius Circle is the new quarterback. Rod Smart with a carry for one. Harry is the next up on our list. And let's go to Bob Costas. All right, Al. Harry, congratulations. We saw an excerpt from your acceptance speech yesterday. You were talking about family, mm -hmm. and family was certainly a theme as your son Donald was your presenter. Yeah, you know, Donald has gone through a lot. His college athletic career wasn't the best as it should probably have been, but since college, you know, he's been dealing with aplastic anemia, and I've seen him and go through the testing and so forth, and I, I have a tremendous amount of respect for him having gone through what he's gone through with the attitude that he's maintained. 
and he's been doing well of late, right? He's doing pretty good. He's doing pretty good. Uh, we're keeping our fingers crossed. Hopefully, uh, he will respond to his most recent treatment. Graduated from Savannah State with a degree in biology. Yes. Now, you get to the Hall of Fame yeah. after a long wait, and yeah. it got to the point a few years ago where you actually wrote to the committee and said, please, no longer consider me. And you told your supporters who used to argue your case in that committee room, stop doing it. Yeah. But they wouldn't stop, and you got here. Well, you know, there was no mechanism in place to have my name removed. I didn't know that when I wrote the letter to them. But, you know, Bob, when you turn 50, you know, you just get to this point where you don't want to be judged. You just want to go ahead and live your life. And the people who I played with and against knew what I had done. And I knew I had their respect. So it really didn't matter what anyone else said or, 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 or felt about me. And that was the most important thing, the respect that I had from my opponents. But now that you're enshrined, do you feel differently about it? I, I still feel the same. I still feel the same. And all of this is about family and just recognizing all of those people who helped me to get to this point. If I had not been elected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, I still would feel the same way. I would be as happy as I could be because my life is pretty good right now. LT, of course, was the more spectacular one, but Harry Carson was the run stuffer, and so much of what Bill Parcells and Bill Belichick were trying to accomplish was predicated on having the other team in second and nine, second and eight, and that was your specialty, and it often led to big victories, and then ultimately the Gatorade shower. You are the inventor of this. It happens all the time now. Now it happens at the Poland Weed Eater Bowl, but it was unique when you did it. Well, you know, I, I, we had a roundtable discussion today, and I said, who's the guy? up in the booth diagramming it, and it's so memorable just to see him uh, diagram it and me do it. Parcells will be in the Hall of Fame someday. someday. You're in with your old teammate, Lawrence Taylor. Congratulations. Thank you, Bob. I really appreciate okay. it. Hall of Famer Harry Carson. Al? All right. Thank you, Bob. Two yes to Sopo carrying, and then he's hit late out of bounds, and that'll be a flag for a personal foul. You know... <laughs> You look at Parcells, and only Harry Carson, I guess, could have gotten Number away with 51. it. There's the personal foul call. Defense. Unnecessary roughness. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. There's some coaches I just can't see a bucket of Gatorade being dumped upon. For instance, Tom Landry, yeah. Vince Lombardi. You, of course, predated that error, otherwise, you'd have been a great candidate for that. Yeah, or you have to kind of know it's coming. I mean, some of those guys, they just kind of stand there and get dunked. I mean, right. in some way, you'd think they would feel it. You know, you would feel the thing coming and kind of move. And, and the ones that really get you are the ones that just take the full splash. But like Harry said, he was the guy that started it all. Well, now you come to expect it. 34-yard line. Teresa Sopo rolling left. Marcus gets taken down. McCoy is in on the tackle again along with Jaquay Thomas. And it doesn't make any difference if it's preseason or if it's regular season or championship or anything. When you play a Jim John Johnson defense and you get on this side of the 50, you're going to get blitzed. And here it comes. It's the first preseason game. He's, he's going he's to come after the quarterback on, on blitz situations, on passing situations. So that's going to make a third down and 11. There is Jim Johnson. It's still a defense over those four seasons. And then last year, a lot of that had to do with the offense, too, because they didn't have the same offense that they had over those four years. And the Cavs injury and Owens gone after early November. Rod Smart, by the way, is John Rod Smart. We talked about him as the he hate me guy from the XFL. Made a big splash on opening night a few years ago when that league was in existence. He was born on January 9th, 1977. That date mean anything to you? Uh, that, no, there was it is. Day, that was the day we won the Super Bowl, yeah. You'd have gotten it. And the Raiders got Rod Smart in here to be a like a kickoff returner. And and in training camp, he's impressed him. And I think that they, they may have a, you know, a third running back, an alternate running back that can play. NFL experience for the Panthers. Third down and nine, and that is into the arms. And then sandwiched is Kevin McMahon. Looked up, tried to haul it in, and then just got hit from both sides. J.R. Reed, number 30. And it is Hanson as well, and everybody is hurt on this one. They have three guys down, and because you watch this, all three guys arrived at the same time as the ball. There's a ball, boom, boom, boom. J.R. Reed looked like he was in pretty good position there. Mm -hmm. 
And I don't, you know, and he's just coming off an injury, too. Hansen's in good position. The ball hits, Reed hits. That's perfect timing. And what J.R. Reed did there is what a safety has to do the respective benches. Yeah, I think he hit the nail on the head there about the, the ball drawing a crowd, and, and, and they all got there at the same time. Now a 51 yard field goal attempt for Janikowski who earlier couldn't even get off a 33 yarder because of a low snap and the bobble by Leckler. This time the snap is good and so is the hole and the kick on the way has the distance and that is good. So the Raiders are finally able to tie the game with 242 remaining in the third at the Hall of Fame game in Canton 10-10. Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company as you look down into Fawcett Stadium. Home of the Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. The game is tied. Late in the third, Bruce Perry to run it back for Philadelphia. Loses the football, but right there to recover it is a teammate at the 33-yard line. And Philadelphia will maintain possession. And what a September we have coming up on Sunday night. We're going to start on a Thursday night with us. September here on NBC. Going low, and it'll make it second down. So Manning, Manning, that's the way we started on a Sunday night, John. Well, that's going to be something, isn't it? You know, the, you know the, that that game when you when you saw it last year and knew it was going to happen. That just had opening Sunday night football mm -hmm. written all over. it. Because it's an interconference game, so they don't always meet. It's been a while since Indianapolis has faced the Giants, and certainly not since Eli Manning got to New York. But it's on the schedule this year, and it's week one, Sunday night on NBC. You know, and the other thing, the Giants have good defense, too. So it's not going to be, you know, I mean, Eli against Peyton, but they really don't play against each other. It's going to be, you know, Peyton playing against the Giant defense and Eli playing against the Colt defense. And that can be a tougher job, I think, for Peyton than uh, maybe one would imagine. The third down and eight now for the Eagles at the 34-yard line. Detmer going deep on third down and eight, and there's contact, and it's going to be ruled incidental contact. There is no flag. as. Darnarian McCants runs into the quarterback Stanford route. Yeah, it's tough for a backup quarterback when you have to play in the second half of a preseason game. You don't get much protection. You better get back there and get that ball out of there. I think that's one of those, you know, those old no harm, no foul, no one, no one's uh, fault on that one. The old NBA thing. Is that a rule? Sort of an unwritten one. Chris Carr to the 34. Brother beat you in anything. Mm -hmm. And the little brother's going to try on the night of September the 10th. First and 10 with a minute and a half to go from the 34. Tuliasa Sopo. A beautifully thrown ball, but incomplete. Will Buchanan could only get it onto his fingertips and couldn't hold on. And Tuyasa Sopo had good timing on that one. I mean, he got back, got set, and got rid of the ball because earlier I thought that they were all holding it too long. But you get it right here, just give it to him right now. And he has plenty of room to the outside, and, and that's one of those that's just a little feet off there, right there. You see how he gets back there, sets, and throws it. Earlier they were getting back there and setting and hopping and hopping and hopping and then the guy that was open by the time they threw it hasn't been open. Second and ten now. Two years of football already in his sixth year. And so it's pretty much a now or never situation for him. I mean in terms of ever ascending, getting higher than a backup guy. Had a chance when Collins was hurt and Gannon before that a couple of years ago to start a few games but just has never ascended now, you know fans around the country are watching this game and wondering if there is overtime in preseason yes there is yes. overtime in preseason oh, game we know that all too well I well, just letting fans across the country know <laughs> well we still have 15 minutes and 48 seconds to go third down and six 
at the 42-yard line. Kuriyasu Soko stepping up. Gets it off, and that'll be a first down. Needed six. Got about seven and a half to Buchanan again. Buchanan has really been a kind of a standout in the in the camp, in the in the off-season camps and the mini camps and the start of camp. Every everyone that's gone up to watch the Raiders in their training camp up in Napa has been impressed with Buchanan. SC guy, rookie. Son of the former president. <laughs> That'll be the end of the quarter. The game is tied in Canton. 10-10. NBC Sunday Night Football back after these messages from your local NBC station. Canton, Ohio. Al Michaels, John Madden, Andrea Kramer start the fourth quarter. The game is tied at 10. We were talking about Willie Buchanan making a couple of catches in the third quarter. His father, Willie, was an 11-year cornerback in the NFL. Remember him was San Diego and Green Bay. And his son trying to make his mark on the other side of the ball. First and 10 now from the 45-yard line. He has a sofa with a fake. Stepping away. Going deep. And it's knocked away. He was looking for Buchanan again and tipped away and intercepted. As Hansen comes up with it and brings it back to the 11-yard line. Giselio Hansen took the tip ball and picks it off as Buchanan, with his good speed, got deep downfield. to Sopo throwing down there, but the coverage was good, and Philadelphia comes up with it. I think it was Matt Ware who deflected it. Yeah, and that's the thing. That if there's a safety sitting in there, you really can't throw the post. And you can see the safety on the left side right here. This guy here, he makes it impossible. If he gets back and does his job, it's impossible to throw a post when he's there. You have to get him out of the post in order to throw that pattern. We're moving to safety. He can move around in the secondary, but it played mainly corner. And does the job there. Sets up the handsome pick. Ball at the 11-yard line. And Timmy Chang who played his college football and set a ton of records at the University of Hawaii, becomes the fourth quarterback. And Chang will flip it to the outside, and that pass is incomplete, intended for Andy Thorne. Yeah, when you're the fourth quarterback in, you you would like to have better field position than Timmy Chang is getting here. But, you know, it's something that all offenses will do. When they get a young quarterback in and they want him to get a little confidence, they'll usually give him that pass, a bootleg pass, and he will look and throw to the short guy. You saw Chang's numbers at Hawaii where they threw the ball all the time. His college coach in home was June Jones. Second down and 10. And this is Bruce Perry, the second year back out of Maryland. And let's go to Andrea. Thanks a lot, Al. We saw that nasty collision just a little bit ago with the Raiders' Kevin McMahon. Well, they said he bit his tongue. They did not say if he had anything else to say, but he bit his tongue. As for the Eagles, Jose Hansen got the wind knocked out of him, but he was fine considering that he just intercepted a pass. And J.R. Reed was fine as well. So no harm, no foul for the Eagles. And we're going to wait and see if uh, Kevin McMahon has anything else to say. Mr. Back to you. Mr. Irrelevant, the last guy picked in the draft, always gets the uh, the title. Yeah, and he'll, he'll learn when you're running a post and that safety sitting in there to keep your mouth closed. Third down and 10 from the... 11 yard line and the play is dead before the snap. Pete Morelli. Timeout. Philadelphia. First team timeout. So they stop the clock. It'll be third and ten when we come back. And we'll also hear from right tackle for Tom Landry's Dallas Cowboys going into the Hall of Fame. We'll hear from him momentarily here in Canton. As after the Eagles have taken a timeout, they come to the line with Timmy Chang, the quarterback at third down and 10 at the 11 yard line. And Chang will throw that one out of bounds into double coverage, and let's go to Andrea. Thank you very much, Al. Rayfield, 22 years. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I never really thought about the Hall of Fame that much until. Uh, 
after the reporters had started uh, reviewing and looking at my accomplishments in the game and then start comparing them to a lot of the other players that have already played the game and were in the Hall of Fame. And then they said, hey, this guy might need, he, you know, he probably needs to be in the Hall of Fame. And then that's when they really snatched Mount tenure. But I wasn't really uh, looking at that. An impassioned speech by you when you were inducted. What was the message you wanted to get out? Well, the main message that I wanted to give out, you know, is that it makes no difference where you come from in life, what the struggles are you face and you go through in life, the hurdles you have to cross. And life will always bring that to you, the thorns that comes to your way. And sometimes they hurt. But if you work hard, you keep yourself focused, you stay in school and get your education, a lot of things will happen to you by being respectful and treating your parents the way you should treat them. Amazing, but you are the first Cowboys offensive lineman to play his entire career with the team and be inducted in the Hall of Fame, and yet you never even played tackle when Tom Landry said, hey, go up against Deacon Jones. What made you ultimately a Hall of Fame tackle? Well, the, the focus and concentration, dedication, and number one was a matter of fact that Coach Landry believed in my athletic ability. And he said he did, and that was good enough for me. Now, Al, not that you can see any kind of height difference between the two of us, but I want you to know that he was initially recruited by Fort Valley State on a basketball scholarship. In fact, he led the he led the uh, country in rebounds that year. I think you might need some double team help on him. Rayfield, right? That was a moving, very moving and very passionate speech that he gave yesterday. Is the one Green is the carrier here? to the 45-yard line. And that's the kind of guy Rayfield Wright is. I mean, he's an emotional guy and a passionate guy, and it's the way he is today, and that's the way he played the game. He was telling me the first time he played against Deacon Jones, he said Deacon Jones comes up to him and says, hey, kid, does your mother know you're out here? <laughs> he said that was the way that Deacon tried to intimidate him. So after he blocked him a couple times, it was a couple years later, he told Deacon, he, you know, he blocked him, and he said, yeah, my mother knows I'm here. Yeah, Deacon. it's beautiful. Worked that into his speech yesterday as Marcellus Rivers makes the catch. And he is taken down at the 30-yard line, and that's the first down for Tuiasa Sopo in the silver and black. Yeah, the thing is, you can see that the Raiders offensively can get the passing game going when they get their timing. I mean, their their timing, like, on that one was good. I mean, the protection is good. Tuiasa Sopo gets back, gets rid of the ball at the right time. The guys open everything works and it, and it looks like a thing of beauty and again I know it's just the first preseason game we're talking about the third quarterback but they haven't had a lot of that tonight it was a 14 yard game and this time there's nothing happening and the ball is loose and the Philadelphia Eagles are going to wind up with the football the fumble by Green and the Eagles wind up with it as Torrance Daniels number 48 is the eagle who recovers. You know, and what's going to cause her all running game is anytime you get penetration. And they're trying to go across the field and they get penetration inside and there's no place to cut back. Well, one of the new twists in the rule book this year is, is a, a referee's only allowed 60 seconds under the hood. He's been in there about yeah. four times 60 seconds. No, no doubt. Well, he maybe. did a couple double dips in there too, I think, didn't he? Couple, a couple of extra peaks. Yeah, you notice they have new uniforms this year too, huh? Trying to go a little, a little sleeker. Is it what's over the top or under? After reviewing the play, the runner is down by contact. The ball will be placed on the 32-yard line. Oakland will not be charged a timeout. Well, Bart, you won your first uh, challenge of the year. Andy, you lost one. Yeah. His first now ever challenge, huh? Well, the, when Art Shell was the coach of the Raiders, they had a replay system in effect, which started in 1986. But that could only have been initiated by the guys upstairs. So it's the first time in uh, Shell's tenure as a head coach that he's had the opportunity to challenge. I and love Art Shell, Al, but he needs a bigger cap. He does. Yeah, you're right. Get the equipment man into the locker right now. Second down and 12. And that's dropped. Yeah, the referees, well, you can see that it's a, it's a sleeker look. New material. Trying to... Yeah, I guess a coach could say the first time he gets a lousy call, the devil wears Prada. Or maybe he wouldn't say it, but... Not bad. Well... 
Are the pants the same? Did they just? The new material. Long black pants are what they're going to wear in the winter when it right. gets cold. Right. Yeah, I had heard that. I thought they were going to wear long pants, but that's not until winter, huh? No, nope. knickers in the uh, in preseason and in the hot weather games. And Tui Asasopo is going to take time out here on third and 12 when we come back. Oakland 10, Philadelphia 10 in the NFL preseason opener on NBC. Third and 12 after the timeout. The game is tied. Right now, they don't gain a yard. You're looking at about a 50, 51 yard field goal attempt for Janikowski. Tui Sopo throws it over the middle into a lot of traffic. And Will Buchanan says, thanks a lot. Three guys are there to meet him. It's fourth down. Well, we talked about Jim Johnson. When you get in that situation, the defensive coordinator of the Eagles, you know he's going to bring bring a blitz. So Tui Asasopo was throwing a pattern that you should be good against a blitz, and he just got rid of it, but there was, there was good coverage on the play. This will be a 50-yard attempt. Earlier, Janikowski made one from 51. Earlier in the game, Akers of the Eagles made a 55-yarder. So to break the tie here with the hole by Leckler. He has a lot of leg and accuracy as well on this one. And Oakland is able to take the lead. Oh, Seabass Seabass hits, hits one. <laughs> Two long ones for him. 13-10. NBC Sunday Night Football is being brought to you by Best Buy. But I've had that feeling since then where every day is like the happiest day of my life. <laughs> Tonight's the happiest night of my life. And we are thrilled to share it with you as the Goodyear blimp providing the aerials, Goodyear tire and rubber company. And there you go, John. Congratulations from the blimp. I don't get a lot of congratulations from up in the air. Billboards, huh? blimps. Bruce Perry. You saw Paul Tagliabue before he's left for Chicago. Two days of meetings there with the owners. And will a commissioner be named by the end of business on Tuesday? It's down to five. Most people feel that Roger Goodell is the favorite because he's been in the office for a long time and has done a great job. Greg Levy, partner with a law firm, providing the principal outside counsel for the NFL. Fred Nance, partner with a law firm, would be a third candidate. Robert Reynolds, the vice chairman of Fidelity Investments, and Mayo Shattuck, chairman of the board of the Constellation Energy Corporation in Baltimore. They are the five that will make presentations. They'll talk about it. But the question is, will a commissioner be named? Andrea. Well, Al, one owner told me that Roger Goodell, who you've been talking about, has 15 to 17 of the 22 votes necessary for election. None of the other four candidates has 8 to 10 votes. The owners will start to vote Tuesday afternoon after each candidate makes a 30-minute presentation. Now, the perception of some owners is that a weak field of three candidates from outside the league makes the deck stacked in favor of Goodell, who's been Tagliabue's right-hand man for 16 years. And that has some owners decrying what they call the transparency of the selection process. Well, that's a, that's a very interesting take on it. And you need 22 votes. It was, um, I wouldn't say contentious the last time it came around, because it got down to Paul Tagliabue, and there's Jeffrey Lurie, the long time, it's funny to say long time, because it seems like just yesterday he bought the team, but Jeff's owned it for a decade now, of the Philadelphia Eagles. But it came down to Tagliabue, and then Jim Finks was the other guy. And a lot of people thought, well, they'd give it to Finks, the football guy. But it was Paul who, of course, got the job in 1989. And that pass is caught by Bill Sampy, a rookie who's been pretty impressive in training camp. As Chang throws, but now they're going to say that it hit the ground first and Armstrong is down. That's Calvin Armstrong second year tackle out of the University of Washington who will need the attention. Yes. Over town saluting our man on the Hall of Fame weekend. Happy to report Calvin Armstrong able to get up and walk off the field under his own power. They'll be taking him back to the dressing room for a closer look. Yeah, look who's playing right guard now. Oh, 63 Hank Fraley was a starting center. Remember Ball for start, years. And number 41, offense, five-yard penalty. 
Still, first down. And then Hank has been beaten out by Jamal Jackson. And I think that's Jamal Jackson right there, 67. And Andy Reid was telling us the other day he kind of likes Jamal Jackson. He's a little bigger in the hind quarters, he said, than Hank Fraley. And I think that Hank Fraley could be fighting for his life as an eagle. And maybe this is a type of thing. You just can't be a backup center alone. If you're going to be a backup center, then you better be able to play guard also. He's playing here in the fourth quarter because of an injury to Armstrong. Pass is made here by Mike Bartram, also the long snapper. I always liked Hank Fraley. I mean, he was he was one of the bad bodies. <laughs> you know, then you always wonder how do you how do you work out every day and twice a day in training camp and have have that uh, body that Hank Fraley has. But he play he was a smart player, you know, and he you know and he knows the game and he knows what he has to do. He and Donovan McNabb really worked well together. Fraley and Frankie Winters, your your types of senses, huh? They're both old bag of donuts. Yep. That's a fumble, and the Raiders are going to wind up with the football. Fumble created by Lucy, and it is Bruce Perry who costs up the football, and coming away with it is the linebacker Ryan Riddle. You're gonna see this is this is when they bring bring the outside guy up, and you just play him tough. Now, if you're going to kick him out, you need a better block than that. I mean, some guys, and that's what happens. I think when they go in training camp and they kind of do dummy scrimmage, I think you get blocks like that. You know, I mean, they don't run through. You know, you don't you don't block into a guy. You block through a guy, and that was blocking into a guy. And bad things happen when you block like that. Raiders back in business after they just taken the lead. To the outside, going nowhere is DeJuan Green, who earlier was the beneficiary of a challenge that overturned what would have been a fumble. Torrance Daniels makes the tackle. You know, John, you were talking about the busts talking to each other when they turn the lights out at the Hall of Fame. Now, that that's everybody. It's It's... Both if you're not here and if you are here, right? That's, right. Yeah. That's all I the believe guys. that. I believe that my bust is in the Hall of Fame right now, and they haven't turned out the lights yet. Mm -hmm. But there's going to be a time where the last guy leaves, turns out the lights, locks the door, it's completely quiet in there. It's dark, and the bust talks to each other. I believe that. Section <laughs> 13, and that is incomplete. So. Assuming your bust is going to start talking to somebody later tonight, who are going to be talking to? Uh, probably Reggie White, you know, and telling them, you know, what a great job Sarah did, what a great job his, his kids did and representing him and that, and that we missed him. I mean, you know, that going in, in with this class, I'm very proud of these people, and Reggie White was a big part of it. And, you know, not having them him there with us we missed a little something sure I mean taken from from us much too early obviously dying a couple of years ago in his early 40s it'll be third down and 13 from the 42 he has a circle throws and that is caught on the outside by Will Buchanan who makes yet another catch that'll be his fourth and I imagine through the years you'll have a few chats with Lombardi too won't you yeah, Lombardi, George Hallis. I mean, you know, these are, Vince Lombardi was always my idol. Uh, George Hallis kind of, you know, made it possible for all of us. Uh, Paul Brown was a, you know, a sharp guy. Uh, you know, just some of my favorite players like a Walter Payton, you know, and, and see it all sweetness again. And I mean, I mean, these these guys are special. I have a picture uh, at home of these two guys, George Hallis and Vince Lombardi. And I mean, that's what coaching's all about. Flag is thrown. Pressure was on as to as the circle handed the ball off. The tackle was made immediately. May have been Ramsey who came across the line early for the Eagles. Either that or, or he got he got a great jump on it. He got off right with the ball, or he got off a little early, but he was right on the ball. I mean he's lined up Outside, as a nose tackle. Oops. Number 77. Defense. Five yard penalty. Still, first down. You can see him, it's right here. Here he is here. Now, oops, you know, you know, I used to always say, how, you know, defensive linemen watch the ball. 
Now, you know, if you're way outside, maybe you didn't see it. You know, you have to watch with your periphery. But how can you line up over the ball, watch a ball, and jump off sides? So what could have been a great play was a terrible play. You tell me. <laughs> First and five from the 23. Sweep right. And it's a first down. It will probably be a first and goal to mark it at the nine-yard line by DeWan Green, who played his college football at South Florida. Matt Ware with the tackle. Yeah, we heard the snap count there. And, and how often do you think they go on two? I would bet you that that offenses 90% of the time go on second down. Just easy in the yeah, huddle the to say on two, yeah, right? on two. And then, and then half the time, if you're, here it is, listen. It's a second hut. In fact, the, the, the ball was snapped a little late. Well, that was the that was first sound. Well, they're in on two and a half. <laughs> and then they go on one here. Maybe they should go back to two, two and a half. Tackle made by Gaithier on the carry by Green. You know, I was talking to Bob Greasy the other night at one of the functions, the old Miami Dolphin quarterback, and he was saying that that, that the biggest thing that a quarterback will forget is the snap count. Because when you're in the huddle and you're calling a play, you're picturing a play, the blocking, the defense, the coverage, and all that. And then you say on two or on one, and then you get up there and you forget what you just said in the huddle. I can believe it. It's just easier to say on two, so you don't even have to think about it. White! 90! It's on one. I think it was a hut hut. Back to back. One and a half, Rashard Lee, the intended receiver. So it's six and a half remaining. It's third down and goal for Tui Asasopo. Yeah, you know, you, you were talking about Art Shell and being the head coach and being in the Hall of Fame, but you know, we have other coaches down there. I mean, Art is in the Hall of Fame, and then we have Willie Brown, the defensive secondary coach, who's also in the Hall of Fame, a great corner, and then Fred Blitnikoff in the Hall of Fame as a wide receiver. So there's, there's three Oakland later Hall of Famers there in the sideline. Third down and goal. Julius Asoko stepping up and stepping down to the five-yard line. So it'll be fourth down, fourth and goal. And they'll bring in Janikowski again to try to make it a six-point game. Art's writing stuff down. I know one thing. He has a, a rookie from Cornell in there, Kevin Booth at right guard, who they really like. I mean, they, you know, they're probably going to start a rookie at right guard, whether it's Paul McQuiston or Kevin Booth. But I know that's, that's one of the things that they want to get out of this game tonight. Everybody expecting that Christian's going to be the guy. This is a 24-yard attempt. And it's Janikowski's third field goal of the game. And it comes with 544 remaining in the fourth period. Open with its biggest lead of the night, 16-10 Raiders. Very tough NFC Eastern Division. Of course, Philadelphia is the fourth member of that division. And that's the win will run the ticket. Back to the 25-yard line. I think it's coffee clutch time with Bob and Chris downstairs. And Chris, I heard you say at the half that you, you know you think the Philadelphia Eagles will be right back in the thick of things in this division. Yeah, I really do. I mean, there's just too much talent. This is one of those teams that, over the past three or four years, put more players in the Pro Bowl than than any other team in the NFC. So why couldn't they bounce back? So many injuries a season ago. Jim Johnson didn't get any worse as a coach. Donovan McNabb looks sharp. Brian Westbrook. The only fear you have with the Eagles is, are they going to be able to stay healthy? Because they're not very deep at all. From the 26-yard line. That's <laughs> made on the outside by Ford. What do you guys think you know, of the Dallas? Everybody talking about the big story in the offseason, Owens to Dallas. And he's going to play for Parcells. And how do you th what do you think we'll be saying in four or five months? You know, I got a feeling that Bill Parcells, even if it was not his idea and it was Jerry Jones' initiative, that there's some understanding that if Bill Parcells says it's gotten to the point where I've had it, that he has that veto power. He doesn't have to persuade anybody. If it gets to the point where he's had it, that's the end of it, and T.O. better not push him to that point. Well, I wouldn't want Terrell Owens to wash my car, but a lot of people... 
think he's something special, and I think he is too when he's playing football. But I saw him tear apart two football teams, and I wouldn't have signed him. He has a deep, abiding affection for you that oh, yeah. actually predates his misadventures <laughs> you know in Philadelphia. What? I hope I'm wrong. I really do. I hope I'm wrong. Well, when I was hope, the last time he... you were wrong, Chris? I can't remember it either. <laughs> My point exactly. No, well, where you're wrong is what I was talking about earlier. Is you look at Jeff Garcia with the 49ers and, and you look at Donovan McNabb with the Eagles, and they were both better when they had Terrell Owens right. than they are yeah. without him. You're right, but also you have to look at what they did internally to that football team. And, and he really tore some people apart, offensive coordinators, head coaches, and both quarterbacks. Yeah, right, and that, and that was in his second year. In his first year, uh, everyone loved him. They were giving him parades. Hey, Al, one point here that we didn't have time to get into our halftime piece with John that I found very interesting. John, you said that upon reflection, even though in general modern players are bigger, stronger, faster, you don't think that any modern team would stack up to your great Raiders teams of the 70s. No, and I, I was a little upset with myself, too, because I had bought into that thing, Al. You know, that players today are bigger, stronger, faster, mm -hmm. teams are better. And I'd said that. And then then with this Hall of Fame thing, I've been watching, you know, tapes of, of not only our teams, but, you know, the Pittsburgh Steelers and Miami Dolphins, all those great teams. And, and, and those teams, with those guys, would have been great in today's era. And they would have beaten these guys. I mean, I mean, those guys were better. I mean, if we were playing Cliff Branch, would would still be tough to cover them. Speed kills. They still couldn't block Otis Sistrunk. They couldn't block Ted Hendricks. They wouldn't get by Art Shell as a tackle. And I was kind of a little upset with myself when when I'd say it. But I don't want to be, you know, that Paul Forge is always saying, "Oh, mm -hmm. you know, you know, football is better in the old days." I don't want to say that, but. I also want to say that it was pretty good in, in the old days, and those guys could still play with these guys today, and they could still beat them, if you know what I mean. I know exactly what you mean. And you know what? That's why we love sports, because you can, have, you can have discussions about this, and you can argue about it. And, you know, there's no black or white answer here, there, as is the case in a lot of controversial issues. Not that this is a controversial issue, but, you know, do you think this? Do you think that? There's a lot of gray in it. What do you think, Chris? When you play. Well, I, you know, I've got to agree with you, John. I, I just, I look at the guys that were playing in, I don't know. And I, I, you hate to say there was more passion or whatever, but the guys have so much money today. You know, it, it's, it's, like a, it's like a great boxer. Once you make your first $20 million, how much do you really want to go back in the ring and go do that again? We were out there playing for our lives, man, because I mean, it, was, it was either go win the game or go get a job kind of a deal. So I don't know. I, I, there are no question they're great players. I probably, if I had to pick one decade, it would be the 90s. It was the beginning of free agency. Teams like San Francisco, teams like Dallas seemed to load up with an already great football team. I think those were probably the best teams. I'll tell you what I do. You take your 90s and I'll take the 70s and we'll go. <laughs> we'll go play you anywhere in any field at any time. I would pay good money to see that. <laughs> I just got a note that Owens is going over to wax your car, not to wash it, Chris. As <laughs> long, long as he's not coming over to wax me, I'm over there. <laughs> <laughs> What's our second Sunday night game? It's uh, Dallas, Washington. Yeah, well, yeah. he may get his wax job. No, well, well, Chris is going to be in New York in the studio that night. <laughs> With the door locked. <laughs> <laughs> They get the messenger. <laughs> Raiders at the 25-yard line with 444 remaining, trying to protect a six-point lead to the Sopo. He's going to hand the ball off to Green. Well, we looked at the NFC. He's talking about the AFC West. Well, you've got Jake Plummer. You've got Jake Cutler, who came over from Vanderbilt in the draft. He's going to pressure the snake. Herm Edwards goes from the Jets to Kansas City to try to get things going there. San Diego was a very hard luck team last year, better than a 9-7 and seven record, but Drew Brees is gone. Phillip Rivers is the new guy now, and uh, you've got the Oakland Raiders as well with a mark of 4-12 and 12 last year, and that, of course, is the setup in the AFC West with Denver as the defending champion. In fact, they had home field advantage throughout the playoffs and then couldn't win in the championship game against Pittsburgh. Guys, what's your take on the uh, on that division? So there's a lot of firepower in that AFC West, Chris, as the Raiders try and bounce back from 4-12. and 12. Tough to do business having to play those three teams six times. Yeah, I, I still think the Raiders are the bottom team in that division. The team that I would really keep an eye on, I believe, 
San Diego Chargers. I, I think Phillip Rivers is going to come out and have a bang up year. He's not a rookie. He's had a couple years. Has LaDainian Tomlinson. Has Antonio Gates. Can't really ask for a better scenario. Their defense is tremendous stopping the run. A lot of the elements in place for them to win. Rivers has had a couple of years doing what? Just watching. That's right. It's sort of like us. <laughs> there, therein lies the question mark. Well, it is. But I, I really, I've seen him a couple of times just in preseason games, I know. But I really like his release. I think he has a really quick release, a little bit sidearm, but gets it out of there quickly. And, and with the talent around him, I think he'll be able to do some good things. And he hands the ball off to Tomlinson. And as I say, I mean, that team had so much bad luck last season uh, they should they could have won 11 or 12 games they come off a remarkable season the year before and then they lose that gut wrencher to the Jets in the playoffs and you know you've got Ladanian Tomlinson as long as you have a healthy Tomlinson you're yeah in that's pretty good big shape. and that you know I've always said that, that the best friend of a quarterback is a, is a good running game or a good running back and and Ladanian Tomlinson may be the best you know John the interesting question is will Willie Rowe stay retired I mean, he's retired, but I don't know that I'm fully convinced. I think he's about 65% retired. But if he's gone from the Kansas City Chiefs, that's an entirely different football team, in my opinion. Right, and I think Willie Rose's body's going to tell him. You know, that's that's the thing is, you know, when you get when you get towards the end, it's your body that tells you whether you have another year in it or not. And I would bet that's what Willie's going through right now. But. As you say, uh, with him, there's something special. Uh, without him, uh, uh, it'll be a little tougher for him. Raiders are going to punt here, and Philadelphia is going to get the ball back with about three minutes to go in the fourth period. Shane Leckler was the highest career punting average of anybody in the history of the league. Of course, that's a movable number. Boys, we'll see you after the game. All right, Al, and with everything going on this weekend, we almost lost track of the fact that tonight marks the first time that you and I have worked together since basketball. And if you think you're excited about that, well, <laughs> don't. I know you, what no, I, you I know, know the rest, Al. You know <laughs> the rest, Al. Yeah. Bob and I start well, we, we didn't start, but we were in a movie that grossed about $11.63. <laughs> How many people watched it? Four. <laughs> <laughs> but believe me, they got paid. <laughs> <laughs> and that's another story. <laughs> the action from the Sunday games and scintillating commentary. <laughs> from the 37-yard line. Little screen pass is set up here to Bruce Perry. And Perry loses the ball. The Raiders are all in agreement that they have recovered it. And we have to see a man in a striped shirt concur. What's your number four there, Davis? Have you noticed that there's the Raiders have two number fours tonight? Yep. Yeah, Burl Toller is number four and Davis is number four. Thank God Brett Favre is not in the game. I mean, that's, that's what a first preseason game can do to you. And to us. <laughs> yeah, right. That's what I mean to you. And, it, and that's one of the number fours, Davis, coming off the field. Strip made here. Dennis Davis, number four. Riddle's been in a lot of the action. Ryan Riddle, number 57 tonight. Right, and that was the type of thing that Rob Ryan was talking about the other day is, is – is go for the tackle, but also go for the strip. Go for the ball, knock it out of there, and that's exactly what he did. Chris Carl, recovery. And the uh, here goes to DeJuan Green. Philadelphia has one timeout, plus they'll get the stoppage of the two-minute warning. Uh, well, one player that we haven't talked about tonight is Raiders wide receiver Jerry Porter, who was left behind in Oakland nursing a calf injury. He wasn't—he didn't make the trip due to that, and he hasn't practiced all week. Now, one Raider official called Porter a guy who shoots his mouth off. Quote, the more attention he gets, the more nonsense it gets to be. He reiterated that the Raiders have given Porter's agent permission to shop for a deal, but would want at least a first-round pick and $4 million of his $10 million signing bonus return. Now, Randy Moss summed it up best. He said, do you want to be a Raider or don't you? Can we depend on you? He said it was frustrating from a team standpoint. And it will be interesting to see when Porter comes back if he'll be active in any games because once you get in, in Al Davis's doghouse, as Marcus Allen knows, 
you don't emerge. And Art Shell has made a point of proving that uh, he's going to deal with players who are there, who want to be Raiders, and really those who don't can just be cast aside, Al. Yeah, when we talked to Moss the other day, he pretty much said, you know, are you with us or not? Yeah, and that's and that's what it has to be. And, you know, and, and Jerry Porter, you know, if he doesn't want to be there and if he can do something about it, fine. But if he can't, you still have to go out and play. And, you know, his teammates, you know, have all had something to say about it. I mean, he had, you know, he had a thing with Art Shell early and said he doesn't get along with them. And, you know, that's a bunch of blown. I mean, you, you, you sign a contract, you get a lot of money, not going to go practice and go play. Yeah. Warren Sapp pretty much echoed those sentiments as we go to the two-minute warning. Hoping to get a Popo's in there. Yeah, the brother, young Zach, number 45, the younger brother of of Manu, and of course, dad played in the NFL. Manu was father. This is Marcus Tuias of Sopo. Manu was a defensive guy, and he winds up raising a quarterback and a fullback. Third down and six. Luis Asoko's pass is not caught, and that means Philadelphia is going to get the ball and a chance to go down the field. I'll tell you, your brother, Tui Asasopo, just made, well, I don't, I don't know if that was Tui Asasopo, no, it was the other. Entry between now and when they open up on the 11th of September against the San Diego Chargers. It's a fair catch made by Dexter Wynn, so with a minute and 48 remaining in the game, it'll be Philadelphia trying to go 91 Yards, Marty Morninwig, the former head coach of these types of things, and then Andy takes him, sorts him out, goes with, you know, goes over what he likes, and that becomes a game plan. No timeouts for Philadelphia. Shang throws, and the pass is caught by Michael Gasperson. Yeah, you know, I was in, in Andy Reid's office earlier, as I was saying before the game, and and he had that call sheet in there, and he has and he had all those situations and. I see they have the ball now, and Andy doesn't have his ball sheet out. And second and one. Pass is incomplete, intended for Andy Thorne. And obviously, they'll go for it on fourth down if they don't convert here. And they want it to make sure they get the first down. Bruce Perry, clock keeps running. Under a minute and a half now. Well, the Raiders were in a prevent type defense. They were in a three man line playing a a soft zone defense so I think that was kind of a gimme uh, the first down on the run Roman you know and continue to pray and you know and all those things or just do anything that they can do they're going to take him to Altman Hospital here in Canton and examined right there players back in no timeouts and throw it off here with Chang at quarterback throwing to the outside and that's incomplete and then we have 61 Yep. Yeah. One part of me says, yeah, that's that's the way it is. And another part says, I don't know. Yeah. Especially in the, in the exhibition game. If, uh, this is Michael Gasperson. And he'll get a first down, but that'll keep the clock going. We have to remember that all these guys that are in there now are uh, usually these guys that are in there now that are going to make the team, make it on special teams. Chang giving it to the outside, and it's Thanks, Thorne. Man. Shanks pass is picked off. Picked off by Dennis Davis, and unless there's a flag, and there is not, that will write a finish to this one. Bruce Perry has a concussion. He initially lost all feeling in his arms and legs, but it came back quickly. They are taking him to the hospital. They're not sure if they're going to keep him there overnight. That's the latest that we know. Okay, thank you, Andrea. So let's just hope for the best. For Bruce. Art Shell will walk away a winner in his first preseason game after an absence since 1994. So the weekend is over. Coach, again, an official congratulations. Phenomenal. Yeah, thank Love you. Love being Al. here all weekend with you. This was just great. So well deserved. And it's beautiful to get the football season back underway. And great to be back with you on NBC on Sunday night. Right, in our first game at NBC together and back again.